You see, passion can never come from pressure. You can, you can set an agenda, a targets, measurements, and all the other things, some of which you've heard about this week, which are wonderful things, but they cannot generate passion. Passion comes from purpose. The sort of things that you were hearing about from my good uh, friend um, uh, with, the, with the hair like Einstein, who came to talk to you at the age of 80 years old, and I think you found him very moving, I guess, because he talks about what it is to be loved, uh, to care. He touched passion. Um, and passions drive people. So I want to dig a little bit more into this as I try to gather together some of the themes of the week. We've talked a little bit about caring for yourself, mind, body, spirit, however you define it. Uh, yes, that's fine. But you know, passions are more than that. In fact, you will never generate passion by caring for an individual self. Say, how so? Let me say again, you will never generate passion by caring for an individual self. You can offer someone a pay rise, you won't create passion. You can offer them a stimulating job. Yes, you'll get an intellectual fascination. You may even get a commitment, but you won't get passion. True passion comes from something else, usually. I'm exaggerating a little bit to provoke us. But just hang in there. You see, if you look at happiness, and I know you've looked a little bit at some of this this week, what is the secret of finding happiness? Well, we can list all these things off, you know, um, to be in the middle range of income, not too much, not too little. <laughs> it's true, if you're in either extreme, it's correlated with depression. Uh, to have good friends, a stable marriage is correlated with, with, uh, with happiness, uh, to have a, spiritual faith, uh, a spirituality, a strong faith, to be reasonably outgoing and uh, someone who tends to be slightly sunny and by nature, um, people who like their jobs, they live in a stable democracy, that's true, all of those things, but you know what? As every GP will tell you, as every family doctor will tell you, one of the most effective ways um, for someone to find happiness is to feel that they found a cause. Um, you know what? An old woman or man who's 78 years old, 88 years old, if they have a cat or a dog, do you know what? They live longer. Why do they live longer? Because there's someone else to live for. Uh, if they have lived with a husband or a wife or a partner for 50 years and the partner dies, you know what happens? The life expectancy rate of the other person falls dramatically. They die of, well, not just a broken heart, but a broken purpose. And then they'll say things like, well, I'm living for the grandchildren. Or, Sophie, my cat, needs me. And they'll stagger on to the age of 129, still looking after Sophie the cat. When Sophie the cat has gone, the passion to live can change. So we begin to understand something. You know what? Uh, if one, of the, one of the things that can cause death of spirit is when someone says, I don't think I make any difference to anyone else's life in any way whatsoever. You know that? Um, who here knows someone who's been de profoundly depressed? Perhaps you've even wrestled with it yourself. And you know, one of the most difficult things, you know, the GP or whoever it is that's trying to help them, you might be. Gee, you've got so many things to live for. And then they say, Chris, there's not a single person whose life is different because I'm still around. I think even their lives would be better off if I was dead. Wow, and this is death of the spirit, isn't it? And because a person becomes convinced they can't make a difference. Um, and what we begin to understand is that a key, a very powerful key to passion is helping someone to understand how they really do make a difference. And you know what? It's not enough to be loved. Chris could say, listen, I really love you. I will miss you every day. Do you know what? I will weep every day for years if you do, if you do something awful to yourself. And still they'll say, yes, but I don't really contribute anything to your life. I'm just a nuisance. I'm just in the way. So it's not enough to be loved. You have to know that you're needed. And this desire to be needed is fundamental to engaging with passion. And I want to ask you a question. You know, for Gary or for, or for, or for Sue or for whoever you are, do the people in your teams really know that they're needed? Do they know that they really make a difference? And could they explain to their children or their friends exactly why it's so important that they do turn up tomorrow morning at nine? 
whose world will really fall to bits if they don't get that report in? Why it really matters that this team actually delivers in the next three months? Do they really know? And you know, often I find that the people at the coalface do. The individual nurse who's struggling on a night shift with severe shortages of staff, who's had two people fall out of bed in the last six hours simply because she didn't have enough staff to run around the ward. And there was various locum staff who didn't seem to understand what they were doing. Yes, she knows. But I often wonder whether the accountant in the hospital knows, or whether the cleaner really knows, or whether the, the person who's doing the transport really knows. I'll give you an example. I've got a 101-year-old relative and let me tell can I just tell you something in confidence? Will that be okay? I can't imagine this will get back to her. Uh, but when you are 101 and you're a woman and, uh, and, and, or a man, uh, blood can be a challenge. And you know what? Uh, the, uh, the, sometimes the ambulance will come at 7 in the morning or 9.30 in the morning to take her to the clinic. And as a long roundabout journey, and she needs to know when the ambulance is coming so that she can sort herself out because there's no time to go to the toilet when the ambulance arrives. And you know what? She has often found herself severely embarrassed and has actually wet herself in the ambulance because of the whole process of being so long. Does the ambulance driver know that it really matters to her if he's late? Does he really know the distress, the shame to this highly sophisticated and intelligent and self-respecting woman to be incontinent in front of all these people when she comes out of the ambulance and wet through everything? Does he know? Probably not. Perhaps he does, but does the administrator know who push him on that particular round in that particular direction? And they say, oh, by the way, you've got three more to pick up tomorrow morning in the other direction. It's going to take 45 minutes longer. Does he know? That's what I'm saying about engaging with passion. Um, and that you know, we can uh, just talk about self, yes, but life is more than that. Um, for most people, there are bigger passions than self, much bigger. 